Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over these rifles here. These are the SAM 7 series. We have three different ones here and I've had all of these rifles for years. The underfold is the newest. The other ones I think I've had for seven or eight years. And um, the reason we're doing the video today is because people ask me about them constantly and I've never actually reviewed them. So I figured I wanted to kind of knock it all out in one here. So basics of the rifle is that they're made in Bulgaria. They have milled receivers, uh, which, you know, the pro of that is that number one, it's going to have a better feel to it. However, the con of it is that it's going to uh, be a little bit heavier for sure. Uh, they have Bulgarian chrome lined cold hammer forged barrels. Uh, some of them have 24 muzzle devices, 24 millimeter rather muzzle devices like we have here on the folder. The others have 14 millimeters, so it just depends on the model. We'll get into those details here in just a second. But one thing people often say is that the milled guns are more accurate. And uh, again, I've had these rifles for years. I tend to disagree with that. However, what we're gonna do next is go over and uh, shoot some groups, see what we get, and then come back at the end and kind of go over each rifle. I have a few different loads. We're gonna run through the rifle, target downrange at 100 yards. We have some pretty good wind. Sorry if the mic is uh, affected by that. Um, but first up, we have some Red Army Standard. This is their 124 grain hollow point stuff. And then we have the steel case, the stuff that probably most of you guys are running through your rifles. Then we have some more sort of match or hunting type loads. On the rifle, we have a primary arms one to six scope. This is their Gen 1 scope. It hasn't been around for years, but I love it. It works well on AKs, has real good eye relief. And uh, we're sitting on a Midwest Industries Gen 2 mount. Everything else on the rifle is stock. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you guys can see the groups better than me. One thing about this scope, it is a one to six, but it's old. And it's got old glass and it's not as good as the new stuff. I can't see the groups that well. Up next is some Winchester PDX Defender, uh, 120 grain split core hall point. A very good uh, home defense or hunting load, in my opinion. So I have a full video on it, I believe. for you is the uh, Hornady. This is their SST 123 grain bullet with a steel case. A lot of people think this is the uh, best 7.60 by 3.9 ammo. I'll leave that up to you guys in the comments section. Either way, we'll see how it does in this particular rifle. Alright, let's go check them out. All right, the first group up there was that Red Army Standard stuff. It's this load over here. We definitely didn't have the best group with that. We're right at four and a half inches on that one. Uh, then we came down here with the Winchester load. Tightened up a little bit, but still not great. We are right at three inches on that one. Then over here uh, with the Hornady, it's pretty terrible. Um, we're right at four inches on that one again. Um, I've shot this rifle with Fiocchi before, the Fiocchi just brass case stuff, and it shot right about two and a half MOA. Um, just for reference, I didn't break it out today, but I have done it. So the rifle's about a two to three MOA rifle, as you guys can see with our Winchester group here. I'm sure after those groups, there's gonna be some folks saying, Mike, you can't shoot, you suck, you're a terrible marksman, etc." cetera. Um, I've, again, owned these rifles for years. That's pretty typical of what we've seen from the groups out of the SAM rifles here. I do not, over the course of the channel rather, I have not seen any evidence that milled guns are any more accurate. Just haven't, and I shoot AKs a lot. I shoot groups with AKs a lot. So um, take that for what it's worth. That said, um, I think a two MOA gun is plenty good for what most folks want an AK for. Uh, so these guns certainly will all do it. So we'll get into each model here and kind of go over it a little bit. This is the SAM 7R. Um, so basically R meaning that it has a rail and that it has a fixed stock that we have here. 
course, milled fixed stocks are a little bit different than uh, stamped fixed stocks. So if you're gonna pick one of these up and you wanna replace it with aftermarket stuff, just make sure you do your homework on that because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, we have our standard uh, US made type grip here. Um, Nothing to write home about. I think KVAR throws them on when they come into the country. Safeties on these guns, all three of mine are excellent. Didn't require any fitting uh, from the factory, so that certainly is nice. We have the uh, non-rib top cover. Sights on this one, basic AK sights graduated out to 800 yards. Again, Colt Hammer Forge chrome line barrel, which is nice. We do have a 90 degree gas block on this sucker. And on the Sam 7R, we have 14 millimeter muzzle device, and this is a factory brake that it does come with. However, if you want to put any type of factory, uh, rather aftermarket uh, one on there, you certainly can do so. Uh, one thing to point out about all these guns is that the finishes on them kind of are, are kind of not great. Uh, honestly, I think the milled arsenals are better, Bulgarian arsenals I'm saying, are better finished than the stamped ones, but that's not saying a whole lot. Uh, they're, they're nicked up, they're scratched up again. Two of these rifles here I've used for years and have thousands of rounds through each of them. And um, that finished issue is kind of somewhat my fault. So I will accept that, uh, that responsibility. So what we have here, of course, is the side folding model. It is still SAM 7. However, we have this uh, sort of looks like a bone steel stock. It's not, I assure you. It is a factory uh, Bulgarian folder. Uh, to fold it, you just push this little button here and then it locks in like that on this button up here on the front. One thing that's nice about it folding to the right is that you can still run an optics uh, rail mount on there and uh, it's perfectly functional. Some, of course, folders are not that way. One thing I really like about this particular model is that it's somewhat ambidextrous. So we have our safety over here, which can be operated with your thumb. As you guys can see, I am not hitting that safety with my finger. However, it's still very easy to actuate with your thumb. I think left-handed folks, a lot of those guys are gonna like that. And I also just like the regular grip that it comes with as opposed to sort of the standard peg grip that we just talked about. Again, safety, very easy to work. Um, no issues there. Uh, you guys can see the milling here. It's kind of got that lightning cut in there. There's definitely some tool marks that are visible for sure. Um, it's not, again, the prettiest. <laughs> I will keep kind of harping on that um, because it's true. You have to understand that uh, these rifles are expensive as well. So don't expect like super awesome Krebs custom type finishes. If you're looking at one of these, it's just not gonna happen. Uh, so we do have our sling swivel here on the left side. Of course, we have our typical sling swivel there up front. They do come with a cleaning rod. I know that's kind of a big thing for AK guys these days. Again, we see a 90 degree gas block standard uh, US made hand guards with heat shields, which is nice. Um, another thing on that that I should point out about all of these rifles is that with milled guns, again, sort of like the stocks, if you want to actually uh, replace your hand guard, uh, you can, you certainly can. And there's plenty of options out there. Just make sure it's gonna work with your uh, milled handguard uh, because they're not the same. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, again, this one has the 24 millimeter uh, muzzle device. This one comes with a brake. It comes with a standard like AK-74 style brake. At least it did when I bought it. And I threw the uh, Bulgarian birdcage flash hider on there. All of these do have uh, bayonet mounts. So if you guys live in free states, feel free to mount a bayonet and drive a gun grabber nuts. Um, it's fun if nothing else. Um, and then this one here, again, this is my latest acquisition. I think I've only had this one for a couple of years now. This is the underfolding model. Uh, one thing I will say is that in general, I don't like underfolders. Um, I tend to like fixed stock the best, then side folders, then underfolders in that order. Um, but in terms of underfolders, this, in my opinion, is the best one on the market right now. Again, factory one. One thing I like about it, and I guess this is a matter of preference to some degree, but it's also a matter of physics, is that it has a straight underfolding stock. A lot of uh, underfolders will have a canted one. And if you think about the way an AK works, uh, basically here's your center line, right? That's the way the recoil is coming through from your barrel. And then on top of that, we have our piston on top, which is also a gigantic piece of mass coming back every time it recoils. So if your cheek and shoulder are down here, it's gonna flip more, right? So the more in line you can be with it, the better. It's the same principle as the reason you want to grip high on a handgun, right? Same same exact thing. And uh, the straight underfolders definitely do that. They have a better, um, they're more controllable in my opinion. However, again, they're still not super comfortable to fire, but they, fold under so that's cool right <laughs> so you have that going for you it locks up nice and tight no issues there this one comes again with the standard u.s uh, made peg grip i threw a magpul one on there 
And uh, one thing about all of these rifles is that the actions are extremely smooth. Again, for a factory gun, they're about the smoothest actions you're gonna see out there, at least in my experience. And uh, this one here has about 1,500 rounds through it at this point. And even with that, it's still super, super smooth. Definitely dig it. Once again, same thing there. We have normal AK sights on the left side of the receiver. You guys can see we have no rail, of course, because it's an underfolder. Uh, this one, again, this one's the newest of the bunch. It has the best finish. So uh, if that's anything going for it, uh, maybe nowadays Arsenal Bulgaria is finishing them better. It's certainly possible. Uh, again, 16 inch cold hammer forged chrome wine barrel. And this one actually comes with a muzzle nut, uh, muzzle device. It's threaded, of course, 14 millimeter, and you can put whatever you want on there. We put our Circle 10 flash hider on there. Definitely like this. Obviously, I was involved in the design of it. Um, but any of your aftermarket 14 millimeter uh, muzzle devices will work on there just fine. So why do I think these are the best uh, factory guns out there on the market? Well, again, the action's super smooth. They're super reliable. I don't think I've ever had a malfunction, actually, with any of these guns. I, Take that back, I definitely did. This one, I had a light primer strike with Tula. I remember that uh, distinctly now. I was filming an optics video and it kind of annoyed me. Um, but other than that, they've been super, super reliable, super durable. They take any mags that you can imagine. And uh, if you look at like the data that comes out of places like Battlefield Vegas and stuff like that, uh, guys who do super high round counts, they always say that the milled guns ultimately are more durable. Now for a regular person, does that matter? Probably not because I'm not gonna put 100,000 rounds through this rifle, however they are, right? Um, but it just gives me a little bit of a, a warmer feeling on the inside, knowing that it can do that if we want it to. Um, one consideration over which one to get of the few, we already covered the underfolder. If you're looking at the side folder, of course, the side folder has the advantage of folding to the side, which is nice and uh, it's compact for you know traveling and so forth. However, it's also longer. So if you're a tall person, you're gonna get a longer length of pull with this. And uh, I would say you trade a slight bit of comfort in terms of uh, shooting with, with this, but you do get that longer length of pull. So if you're like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, probably one you're gonna wanna look at. Another one, again, if you're left-handed, uh, having that ability to work the safety over here without having to come around the rifle is probably something that you're gonna like as well. Now, if I could only have one, it would be this one. It'd be the Sam 7R. Um, again, I like the comfort of the fixed stock. It's very comfortable, easy to shoot well. And uh, I mean, again, fit finish is, is not great, but the action's super smooth. It's super reliable. I put the uh, cheese grater handguard cover on there. That's my doing. And uh, it has 14 millimeter muzzle device, which is probably the most common out there. That said, there's 20, 24 millimeter stuff all over the place, but I really do like this one, this would be my pick of the bunch. Again, I bought all of these, so I guess I picked them all. Uh, price point on these is not cheap, guys. Um, you know, I said it's the nicest factory AK on the market. I stand by that. They're also the most expensive, so you have to pay for that niceness. Um, generally speaking, you're looking at right now, it's uh, February of 2019. These rifles are all about $1,200 to $1,400, depending on where you look. Uh, so they're super expensive, and I know there's a lot of people that just can't wrap their minds around an AK being that expensive, but guess what? It's not 90, 1995 anymore. Um, a lot of options that used to be around aren't around anymore, and uh, the demand for AKs is just much higher than it used to be. Um, a lot of guys who are into like ARs and Gucci ARs want a very nice AK, and they're looking at these rifles and they're selling pretty darn well. So, um, you know, compared to your stamped like SLR 107, which is a great gun, excellent gun. Um, these are again are going to weigh more, but they're also going to cost about two, three hundred dollars more depending on where you look. So that's pretty much it. That's my coverage of the Sam series. If you guys have any questions about any of these three rifles, by all means, uh, let me know. I just wanted to do a quick tailgate review of all of them because people always ask me and I had 10 minutes out here at the range and I wanted to get it done. So that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed yet and you like what you saw here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, the best place to hit me up with those questions is over at my Facebook page. As always, I tend to see them over there much more so than I do on YouTube or full 30. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you in the next video.
Thank you.